Hey folks, Foggy here. Welcome to day 182 of my year of solo board gaming. Uh, considered by many to be ill-advised and stupid. And yeah, we are coming up on the halfway point. Uh, I think actually tomorrow. Uh, believe it or not, I think actually between this game and tomorrow, that's the halfway point. Yeah, 182.5 uh, would be halfway. So this is the last game of the first half of my year of solo board gaming. Will I do a second half? You'll have to tune in tomorrow and find out. Or it could be a very short video explaining why I really need to focus on other things in my life. Um, but uh, we are playing uh, a baseball game here. Baseball Highlights 2045. Now, I have two baseball games in my collection. I have, uh, I have Bottom of the Ninth, with a, which I absolutely love. Uh, you know that because I just played six games of it, even though I screwed up the rules uh, for games two through four. Uh, two through five. Uh, but I absolutely love the game. It feels like it really captures the spirit of baseball. And it does make for a nice quick game by fake focusing on the ninth inning. This, this is also a game. Uh, this vaguely involves baseball. And that's about as much as I can say about it. It does not really feel like it, it captures the spirit of baseball. Uh, it does not feel like uh, it is a deck builder more than anything else. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm not entirely wild about it. Uh, but I'm going to go take you through the whole setup here uh, for the solo game so that you know how to play it in case you want to go out and get it. And you can make that decision yourself as to whether or not this is a game that has baseball thinly painted over it uh, or if this is uh, the thing that will really make you happy and I, I don't know. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, so the first thing that you do is you pick out one of the normal teams that comes with the game. Uh, there are four teams, and they basically consist of a bunch of rookie and veteran cards uh, of various, uh, nothing too complicated. They both, they all have ST on the bottom that indicates that they are a starting uh, character. They have no purchase value, uh, but they do have a, a re revenue value. We're gonna just quickly shuffle these up one more time. Then you also have this deck of 60 cards, uh, some of which are laid out here. These are the characters that you can basically draft. And you'll see up at the top here are purchase values, so like five, four, seven. The more expensive the player, the more that they can do. And these are the players that will help you eventually win games. Uh, the AI deck is over here. Now, when you're setting up for solo game, you're gonna put out two of these mats. Uh, you're going to put your team up in the upper left here and you're going to put a little visitor thing here. You're always the visitor. You take one of these little things with a bat on it, you put it on zero. There's a 10 on the back side in case you score more than 10 runs. And then finally, games one, you're gonna put that on zero. And you're gonna do the same for the AI, except you're gonna give the AI a home beacon, doesn't really matter which. You're gonna give the AI player 15 cards off the, uh, the draft deck here. And that is going to be their starting team. And as far as I know, that that never changes. Um, they're, they're pretty much, that's going to be their team throughout this. You're then going to set out six of these players uh, up here to represent players that you can eventually get. Now, normally in a game of baseball highlights, if you're playing up against somebody else, you're going to go through several rounds of just having your starting teams and eventually get better players and so on. And uh, instead, when you're doing solo, there is a uh, there's a guideline that you should do some solo play, some buy-in rounds, uh, and we're going to pull that up here. Uh, pick one of the four starting teams and then have some buy-in rounds. Now, no buy-in rounds means that it's very tough uh, to beat, uh, so let them know if you do actually do that. Uh, one to three rounds uh, makes it a bit easier. Two rounds is a good starting place for a real challenge. Four or more buy rounds, the solo game is starting to be in your favor if you are a good player. So we're not a good player, but we're only going to do two. I think we're going to do three buy-in rounds uh, is what, what we're going to do. To do a buy-in round, you're going to take your deck of cards here, and you're going to deal out six of them, just six. Put the rest on your lineup. You're going to take a look at the six, and this is what I've got. I've got a one, 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 two, and one. So this is going to give me a total of seven purchase points to work with. Now, I am then going to turn around and take a look up here and see who I really want to get in my hand. Now, I obviously can't get this eight. Uh, that would be great if I could. Uh, this is seven. This is a natural. They're going to get, um, it's not a bad card. It's also not a great card. This robot is also kind of nice, but it has no resale value. So I'm not sure if I really want that. I think I'm going to go with this Nolan Gooden here. Obviously, I play on Nolan Ryan and Dwight Gooden. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and get this player and add them to our uh, 
add them to our repertoire. It's the only player we can get. Uh, there's no, we don't have two, another one for two that's left over. Uh, now we don't have to trade in five worth here, but you can only have 15 players in your deck at any one time. Uh, so when you bring on another player, you have to basically take one of your other players and you're going to uh, send them to the miners. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, natural here, this uh, natural rookie. It's got a good glove, can cancel one hit, but has nothing here for actual hits. So it doesn't advance the base running at all and is only an average player. Um, we'll go over, let's go over a little bit about how the cards are set up. And I'm going to hold this up a little bit and I'm hoping it doesn't go weird on focus. Uh, actually, let's get a let's get somebody who's actually got some stuff here that I can actually point to. Okay, so uh, upper left is the name, uh, and on in the starting deck it's either rookie or veterans. They don't have names. Uh, over here, uh, the red value is the purchase value. The green value is the revenue value. So this player will bring me two revenue uh, when they come up. Uh, the type of player that it is, there's uh, there are robots, naturals, and cyborgs. And some players are better against certain types than others. Then you've got your immediate action and sort of like this weird little brassy thing, which basically changes what the other opponent can do. And you, you'll understand that in just a moment. Down here below it are threatened actions. Now threatened actions are basically hits. Uh, in this case, uh, he's going to threaten a double. That means if the other player can't do their immediate action, doesn't do anything about it, I'm hitting a double and I'm getting on base. Now, if I were to play this and the other opponent had a threatened action of single, single, then that wouldn't be a single, single, it would be walk, walk, which honestly wouldn't make much difference. But um, but if it were like a single homer, then it would be walk, walk, and that would make a huge difference. Uh, finally, you're going to have a little speed down here. Uh, there's a slow, uh, average, and fast that determines some aspects of base running. Uh, slow is going to be the white token, average is going to be the blue token, and fast is going to be the red token. And the way that the base running will work is that if you have a slow player uh, and a hit is made, the runner will advance as many runs, as many bases as the hit. So if, it's, if they're on second and a single is hit, they'll make it to third and that's as far as they go. If instead you have an average runner, they will advance the same number of bases as the hit, except and this is the only exception, if they're on second and a single is hit, they will still advance and go to home. So they will score on a single if they're on second. Finally, with a fast runner, the fast runner will always advance one base more than the hit. So if the runner is on first and a, a single is hit, they will make it to third. If they're on second and a single is hit, they will score. If they're on first and a triple is hit, they will score as well. So. Uh, which is actually, uh, no, if they're, if they're on first and a double is hit, they'll score. That's what I'm, what I'm trying to say. A triple, every, everyone will score off a triple if they're on first. So, uh, And then there's a pinch hitter icon over here, which I'm not entirely sure what that does. I think that just means that you can bring in them in as a pitch hitter. I could be wrong on that. But we're going to go ahead and take our, our Nolan Gooden here. And when you draft a player from the uh, from the line, you're going to put them on top of your deck here. You're going to replace them. So now we got a new one, Sandy Gibson. And then finally, we're going to send somebody to the miners. And I think we decided on this one. We're going to send them to the miners. And we're just going to slide them under here. They're now part of our minor league rotation. We're going to take the rest of these. And these folks are going to go into the dugout. Now, you deal the next six cards. And you'll notice that one of the cards that you're dealing is, in fact, the card that you just drafted. So that's going to give us two revenue automatically. So this time around. We have got a whopping 10 revenue to work with. That's actually really good. Um, 10 revenue. Unfortunately, we can't get two players. We could. We could get this four and this five. I don't think that's really worth it, though. Um, I like this Sandy Gibson because it's a home run. Uh, that is just a solid hit, especially if you got some runners on, on base. I like the speed ball over here, though. The speed bot. Uh, is, how's this one? If this is your... It's a fast runner. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Cancel one hit. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna go with uh, Sandy Gibson here. I feel like that that's my best bet. We're gonna replace that. We still have three revenue to work with, which is not gonna matter here. And we have to send somebody down. Uh, so 
looking at this, I mean, I've got three that don't have any immediate action that are kind of just useless in terms of doing anything. Uh, I kind of like the cyborg, which can pick off a runner. This natural could be helpful. I think I'm going to go ahead and get rid of one of my two rookies that they, they've got some revenue to them. But other than that, I'm going to put that down there. And then these all go to the trash. I'm going to probably do that a lot. And finally, our last buy-in round. So one, two, three, four, five. Is that right? Did I do that? I think I did that wrong. All right, I'm gonna shuffle up here and deal one more. We've got five so far. Debating whether or not I wanna go for it. Um, what I wanna go for here. All right, we've now got six to work with. I'm going to go ahead and take, um, I feel like I should just go for this. I'm going to go, I'm actually going to go for this one. Uh, this has got some really good revenue on it. And I feel like that that's going to be helpful. And then I think the character I'm going to get rid of is, I think this slow robot character, uh, this double, this one is an has less revenue, but I feel like I kind of want to keep that one. So those are three rounds of buy-ins. And now, obviously, you can do as many rounds of buy-in as you want. You are not beholden to do just one. But now we have some more. Do another shuffle. These are uh, a bit unfriendly to shuffle with, I will be honest. Two, three, four, five, six. Deal yourself out six cards. This is your... This is what you're going to be using for your first game. And you'll be doing six innings, uh, unless the score is tied at the end of six innings, in which case you go into extra innings. Uh, and I'm hoping I don't have to do that, because that's going to require some looking up in the rules, and I really just kind of want to get through one game of this so that I can move on to other things. Uh, all right. So we're going to go ahead and pick a... You're the visitor, so you'll get to go first. There we go. All right. Um... I don't need to worry about it. and so I'm looking at what I've got here. Let's just go ahead and lay these out. I'm not sure if you can even really see them. Uh, I've got a robot that can hit two singles. Uh, I've got another robot that can hit two singles, both of which are slow, basically the same card. Uh, I've got a robot that can hit a home run, natural that can hit a single, and also is a clutch. Uh, gets a clutch single immediately. I think I'm going to go with one of my robots here, and just because there's no immediate action. And since I'm the first player, there's no immediate action to counteract. The way that it goes, though, is you do the immediate action on your side. You then do the threatened action on the other side. And then you put out your base runners. Now, in this case, I've got one uh, slow. There are two hits, so I'm going to take two slow tokens and put them on home base at the same time. Already, you're just feeling that deep, intense, thematic approach to baseball that this game really faithfully reproduces. All right, so that is the end of my turn. I've just played my first card. Uh, and now we're gonna go to the bottom of the first. You can't see it, but I just rolled my eyes. Uh, and we're gonna play the AI card. Now the AI card is clutch, single, if runner is on second or third. Now that's their immediate action. Their immediate action does nothing uh, because there's nobody on second or third, so they're not gonna score. They're not gonna go any further. Uh, however, uh, they are threatening a home run um, but we don't worry about that yet. So it's immediate action their side, threatening action our side. So it's a single, and then another single. And we're ready to mingle. Now we go back over here, and we look at the S down here, and we say, okay, well, that's a slow. That means we're going to have one base runner, and they're going to threaten to hit a home run. Now, we have nothing that can counteract hits in our immediate action. Like This is a very, very poor home run you know, uh, situation here. So our concern is pretty much, let's just get people home uh, as best we can. So we're going to throw a robot out there, and they're going to hit a home run. Now, there's nothing in the immediate action, so that's the immediate action on our side. Then we go to the threatening action on their side. 
Oh, he hit a home run. Oh, he scored all the way from first, from home base. All right. Well, it's one nothing now. We're losing. Uh, then we go back to our side, and we say, well, this is an average runner, so we're going to put a little blue on there. We now go back over here. All right, there's nothing in the... We do the immediate action over here. There's nothing in the immediate action. That means we go back here, here the threatening action. Holy cow! Oh, looks like that robot really came through. Bat R100, what a hero to all of us. Woo! Scored three runs. Woo! Okay. I know I'm acting silly. Uh, and we're going to go back over here. We're going to put a base runner on. Now, there are two hits being threatened, so we're going to put two average runners on here. Average again being blue. All right, we're going to come back over. Uh, we're now going to go back over here, and now we're going to get to play. Um... I think we're going to follow that same sequence again. We're going to do single, single. Now that's the immediate action on our side. Then the threatening action over here. They're going to score a single, and then they're going to score another single. And they only go one base each because they're average runners, and nobody was on second, so they couldn't score. Then we come back over here. We're going to put a slow runner for each of our hits. We're going to come back over to the AI side. The AI side. Clutch, single if a runner is on second or third. Well, there is a runner on second or third, so we're going to take uh, one of these, and we're going to hit a single, and that means that they're going to have another runner that scores. And that sucks, uh, but they do manage to score another run. Uh, however, we now go to the threatening action on our side, and we're going to score two more singles. Then over here to the bottom, average runner gets ready to queue up a double which we can't do anything about. Uh, next up, uh, we're going to do veteran here. No immediate action. Double. So this runner is going to score uh, automatically. This runner will get to third. This runner will get to second. And now we come back over here and we're going to do a fast runner. Our veteran rookie is fast, so hopefully they'll be able to do well. Uh, curve cancel all hits versus a robot. Well, that means that can't that hit gets canceled. Our runner goes back to the showers, and we're going to threaten with three singles here, with average runners. Good lord, this is going to hurt. And again, there's nothing I can do about this. Um, well, we're going to throw our dude here up. Uh, it is an immediate action of a clutch single if runner is on second or third. Well, that's going to be a single. So our average runner comes up. And managed to score a single. Unfortunately, our slow runners on the bases only go that far. Now we're going to come back over here. Uh, that was our immediate action. So now we're going to do their threatened action. Their threatened action are three consecutive singles. So first, they're going to score these two. They're now on five. Then we're going to get another single. And then we're going to get another single. And basically, that scores another run. So it's now 6 nothing. I'm losing badly. Uh, my last player is going to come up. Oh, we actually, yeah, now we... Wait, did I screw something up here? See, this is one of the things that I feel like it just, just happens with this game, is that it's really easy to get... Oh, yeah, no, we got another single coming up. Okay. No, we're good. We're good. Uh, we we'll flip over here. Their immediate action is cancel one hit, so they're going to cancel our single... And then they're going to put a slow runner here. And they're going to score a double on this next turn. Uh, and this runner goes away. Uh, then finally, we're going to come over here. Now, we don't have any immediate action. They're going to score a double, which means they're going to go here and here, score one more run. And then, so that was there. And then we come over here. I'm going to put a average runner down. Then they're going to flip. Spitball, cancel all hits versus a cyborg. Fortunately, it doesn't cancel a hit. So, grand slam to clear the bases by our veteran player. It is now 7 nothing. An average runner comes on to play. And I think that's it. I think... I forget if there's, like, one more card to basically be the, the reaction to that card. In which case, it would be a tie game when we would go to extra innings. Um, if there isn't, and if there is...
Da, 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 da. Okay, so yeah. So we can do a defensive save. Basically, we would take anything in our on deck and or which we did not really do this time around or the top of our line our top of our lineup over here we're going to take the top of our lineup to see if there's that's going to do anything against this double glove cancel one hit so actually that does work the hit is canceled um there's still runners on second and third uh which is great they're going to go straight to the dug all of these basically go into the dugout i i no yeah no after the card is resolved it goes into the dugout it's uh, All right, and so we are going to go to extra innings, which means we're going to look up some rules on extra innings. Both players draw three cards from their lineup. Each card player chooses one card to play face down on an in-play stack. I don't think that's the way that AI goes. Uh, you draw three cards as normal. EA draw keeps drawing cards as needed. Okay. So I'm going to draw three cards. All right. Uh, these would all be great if there was anything on them. I'm going to go ahead and do Nolan. Uh, that's immediate. There's no... Because this was canceled out, I think we play the... Okay, so I'm sorry. I'm screwing this up a little bit. So in extra innings, the gameplay works a little bit differently than in regular innings, and that is the part that I was just about to forget. So hopefully I will not screw this up. Basically, you and your opponent play cards at the same time. So we're gonna flip to we're gonna, I'm gonna put out Sandy Gibson here. Uh, no, I was gonna put out I was gonna put out Nolan. I was gonna put out Nolan. So we're gonna put out Nolan and Bat 100. All right. So at the end of a mini game. Yeah, okay, so we both, players reveal their cards simultaneously. Players place their batter pawns on the home plate to represent the threatened hits of the card just revealed. So in our case, we're going to have an average come out, and they're going to have an average as well. All right, uh, cards are now evaluated in this order. Immediate action of the home team. Well, that's obviously not going to happen. Uh, there's no immediate action there. Uh, over here on the immediate action of the visiting team, it's change all hits to walks. Well, their one hit is now a walk. Resolve both teams' threat, threatened hits. Theirs is now a walk, so they're going to walk on to first. Uh, I'm going to score a double, so yay. Uh, at this point, if one te player's team is now ahead on the run score, the minigame is over and that player wins. If, however, the teams are still tied, both players choose and play one of the remaining cards face down and repeat this in order. And then you can just keep doing this with each, with three new cards each time if, they, if you're still tied after three. So I'm going to go with this one because this is the home run. Thank you, phone, for being so loud. Uh, we're going to place average and average here. Their immediate action is Quick Eye Single if versus Cyborg. Uh, it is versus Cyborg. Oh, and I need one more here. So they are going to score a single, uh, which means that one run will score. However, this is as far as they get. So it is now 8-7 there. Our immediate action is fastball, uh, fastball. Cancel all hits versus a natural. Unfortunately, that's not a natural. There should still be one more down here. So unfortunately, that's not going to help. Uh, I am going to score a home run, which scores me, make, gives me nine runs. However, they're going to score a double, which will pretty much score two runs, and then a single, which will score two more runs. They're going to end up with 12, and because they are ahead now, uh, the game is over. Uh, so unfortunately, they have won. Uh, it is now 12 to 9, and they have achieved victory. Uh, the AI has, has trumped me horribly, and we are, we are done. Uh, so now we could take all this revenue that we've generated with this extra inning game and get ourselves a new player. Uh, and we're not going to go through that process or through the rest of this. Essentially, a first team to four team games wins. Uh, I don't have the, the, the stamina right now to go through 
an entire thing, and I'm not going to bore you to death with uh, subsequent videos on this. So uh, this game is going to get put away. Uh, again, this is, of the baseball games I have, this is just not, I, it just does not capture the spirit of baseball for me. Uh, there's nothing about this that screams baseball. This feels more like somebody warped baseball into some other game and still kept the baseball skin on it. It's like, it's like, it's like, okay, so it's like Men in Black when the alien is hiding in Michael D'Onof, Vincent D'Onofrio's skin. It's, it, there, you can tell it's supposed to be Vincent D'Onofrio on the outside, but it's really a bug underneath, and it's not really fooling anybody. So this is another game that's not really fooling anybody, and it ain't baseball. Um, I think the thing that really bugs me is that you, there's, you're doing everything at the same time. Like, it's, it, it is an interesting little back and forth, and it, I don't know. It just doesn't have that feel to it. It doesn't feel like when you're pitching, you're, it, you're pitching. At the, it's, it's like you're playing two different games at the same time because you're always pitching at the same time. You're always defending at the same time. It just, it just doesn't work. Anyway. My, well, 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 well. That is my uh, that is my commentary track. I will say there's a lot of helpful stuff with this game. I, there really is. Um, so there's a pretty lengthy rule book in here that's pretty clear. I, I don't think it's that difficult to find anything. I will say it was un, it was a little irritating that the information about running the bases was underneath the stadium map features instead of like in here during like the you know this part of the game, which is actually explaining how to play. Uh, there's another part which is that I had to look up about the solo game, which talked about the buy-in. Like, how do you do the buy-in? Uh, you're not going to play through a mini game every time, are you? No, you're going to deal out six cards, which that should have been a little bit more, I think, uh, explicitly mentioned. I, I probably could have been intuited from the rules, but I felt like I had to go look that one up. And then there's a great little thing in here which basically takes you through the entire thing one by one about how the man like it tells you how to set up a two uh two two player game with a specific deck and then takes you through the moves and explains why the players did those moves and so on and i feel like this is actually a pretty good playthrough like you can follow it pretty easily and it's you don't really see this sort of thing ever done and so it's this is one of the better things uh in terms of the components i eh, eh. If I scramble these up, which one's fast, which one's slow, which one's... What, what would it suggest, you know, I would almost say, like, you know, go red, yellow, green. Because at least most more people are familiar with that color scheme than anything else. Um, if you want to do, do that. I, I, I don't know how you would really distinguish between them. But they are very ind indistinguishable until you've played a few games. It's going to be a little while till you realize the way that they're set up. Um... This the box. I know this has just become a bitch fest at this point. The box is really huge for what is not a lot of game. I think because they're assuming that you're going to get all the expansions with it. This is a great amount of space. I'd love to be able to store like something in here that's worthwhile. This game ain't it. Uh, there's like huge cavities here for where you're supposed to put you know, your little starting teams. Put that there. Like each one of these has like put each of your starting teams in one of these. And then the AI expansions go elsewhere. It's just it's a lot of it's a lot of space. I I wish some of my other games had this much space in it. You know. Anyway, uh, that's it. I'm not going to take you through the whole thing, and I'm going to stop complaining about it now. And I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please click like, cl click subscribe, uh, comment in the YouTube videos down blanks down below. Uh, this might be my last video aside from one explaining if I'm going to do another half year of this. Uh, so if you would like to see another half year of this, please comment down below.